Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm going to give uh, an update on the work we've been doing over the past six months on modified base detection uh, at Oxford Nanopore. So as you probably are aware, we uh, released six months ago, we released a piece of software called Remora, which is our epi base color, essentially modified base calling on top of base calling. Um, we, you know that we like fish names at ONT, so uh, we also chose one that is quite relevant in this case. So Remora are uh, is interesting uh, fish that latch on to larger aquatic creatures, including sharks, and uh, the similarity here is that our uh, uh, Remora algorithm uh, plugs into uh, our base colors, different base colors that we have at ONT. They have different tasks as well, so the base color base calls and Remora calls modification uh, instead. So it's like two separate tasks, whereas in previous iteration that was not necessarily the case. Um, and interestingly, the Remora fish actually evolved to have very little drag to the shark so that they, not, they don't actually annoy their host. Uh, we've done also uh, some optimization so that Remora doesn't actually add up any extra time to run in, sub, uh, in hack and sub mode. And interestingly, a last comparison is that they both feed off the, uh, their host output. Uh, for our uh, Remora algorithm, it's the base color output, so base calls. For the fish, I'll just let you uh, try to find by yourself. Uh, in terms of the advantages of the, uh, the algorithm, it works from a much smaller uh, slice of signal, which allows more uh, diverse uh, ways to train the base call and to generate the base call, the base call training set, the modification base call training set. And it offers a high accuracy than previous method that we released. And finally, it's much, much quicker to train. So our absolute record so far is from actual DNA to a 5MC model in 11 hours and 30 minutes. So quite happy with that. We obtained that actually a couple of weeks ago. How does Remora work uh, more practically? So from a, from a row uh, signal uh, that is base called with our base color, Remora will scan the read and extract the signal corresponding to the motifs of interest, so in this case CPGs. And you can see that now we're going to focus on this particular signal slice, and we also extract the base call that has signal encoded with the move table. And the first thing that Remora does is to expand this, uh, the, this base call so that they actually match the length of the signal. And finally, we also expand upstream and downstream so that we, for each signal point, we also encode the, uh, the upstream and downstream bases as uh, NMERS. And then we run the hot encode so that we can actually use that as an input for the uh, neural net. In terms of the signal itself, in previous iteration of Remora, we used the row signal directly. Now, in more, uh, more recently, we've implemented something called rough rescaling, which is a cheap way to, re, uh, to rescale your signal based on the expected level from a KMO table. And uh, this is what we refer as V1 models. The neural net of Remora is actually quite simple and quite small, uh, which makes it quite easy to train. Uh, essentially, it's just like two heads, one with the encoded sequence, the other one with the signal intensities. And we've got a few convolutional layers. We concatenate the layers, a few more convolutional layers, and then we've got a categorical output at the end, which could be one or multiple modifications, in this case, uh, C, 5MC, and 5HMC. So far, we've released uh, a few different models, but in particular, our flagship model at the moment is the 5MC CPG model. We have shown by different ways that this is probably a new uh, gold standard for methylation detection now. And uh, the way that we've trained this model is using human and Zymo DNA, uh, Zymo DNA that we PCR to remove the, to remove the modifications and redeposited the modification with MSSS1. We've just, I think, was yesterday released the model for Kit 14. Uh, and you can see that for Kit 12 and Kit 14, we've got an area under the curve which is, which is like really high, so we're quite happy actually, really close to, we're actually close to the theoretical maximum you can, you can um, in terms of correlation, you can have the bisulfite sequencing, mostly because of errors in, uh, in bisulfite sequencing. Um, so we've got this very nice correlation. How can we actually prove that we are better than the previous gold standard? To do that, we've ordered uh, synthetic oligos with modifications at known position. Uh, these actually contains 90 different CPG sites in different sequence contexts, and they are representative of regions in the human CPG island. 
Uh, we've performed deep bisulfite sequencing on both, uh, with both Oxford nanopore sequencing and uh, short read bisulfite sequencing. And essentially what this allows us to do is to get um, uh, metrics per position, but the, base, the accuracies that I'm going to show now are not per ref per position. They are actual metrics that you can get for every single read at every single position. Right, so uh, you can see on this plot there with the Q accuracy that for every single position that we've scanned on these oligo sets, we are performing significantly better than bisulfite sequencing. That's another way to see the data. It's aggregated, all the positions are aggregated there. You've got one point is one position. So you've got bisulfite sequencing over there. And you can see that the first model that we released for R9 was actually a bit worse than bisulfite sequencing. But um, uh, over the last six months, we've actually increased quite a lot of accuracy with different, different tricks, uh, changing the pore, optimizing the hyperparameter of the, of the uh, network and improving the training data. And more recently, uh, like this chunk rescaling algorithm that I mentioned. And now we've got a really high accuracy, actually, with nearing like Q, Q30 for modification calling, which is 99.8% uh, accuracy. So I'm just need to explain a little bit the difference between the row and the pass accuracy. So the row uh, scores are the scores that you get for every single position in your reads. But we have a quality filter that we apply, which is a symmetrical modification uh, score threshold, fixed threshold. And that normally removes between 15 and 10% of the call that we uh, consider being uncertain. More recently, we've started working, training our models from uh, randomers, uh, and that's the construct that is over there. You've got the modifications flanked by two uh, relatively short randomers. Because Remora allows to work from relatively small signal slices, we can use this strategy now, whereas before we were not really able to use this sort of, uh, of construct. So the first thing we do is that uh, when we construct these randomers first, and then we, we base call them, sequence them, and base call them. And then the, second, the next task is to extract the random sequence over there by using the known sequence on the uh, flanking the randomers. And then we've got a custom duplex pairing read. So we, we use the, uh, we use the, uh, the, uh, the duplex, duplex sequencing, essentially. And we then perform duplex decoding uh, to get like, very high accuracies on this, on this signal slice of the randomness. So that allows us actually to have a ground truth set for the sequence that we then use to uh, prepare the data for Remora and train models. So you've got the result that we obtained here for our proof of concept model uh, with this random model. So you can see that it's not quite yet as good as the, uh, um, the PCR MSSS1 model, but we're getting there. And uh, we are working on principally like uh, in, um, the main thing that we know is going to improve it is to get more training data. And at the moment, it's still a bit of a complicated protocol. But we, are, we know that we can improve that. And we actually have good result, preliminary results. Finally, uh, I think yesterday we released the first all-context 5MC model. Uh, this model was trained with from randomers as well, but we've also spiked in a bit of MSSS1 data. Essentially, we want one model to rule them all. That would be good for CPGs, but also outside of CPGs. Uh, and so by actually like mixing randomers plus MSSS1, you can see the results over there for... Um, so that's on the held out MSSS1 data set. You can see the, five, the, the CPG accuracy is actually getting really high. We're over 99% accuracy now. Um, and on the DCM motif from E. coli, we are over 98% accuracy already. So kind of still, I mean, it's a work in progress. That's a research release that we made at the moment, and there is more work to be done. It's available on Rario at the moment, if you want to give it a try. Uh, but we are quite, nice, quite happy to see that we've got a very good correlation with bisulfite sequencing as well. In terms of future direction and release, uh, uh, the V0 model, so the non-chunk rescaled model, are already available in uh, Guppy and now in Mino. Uh, the V1 models with the chunk rescaling are available in Megalodon, Bonito, and Dorado, uh, Dorado quite soon. We are working on faster models, like smaller models, for fast ba base calling, so you would actually be able to keep up with fast base calling at the moment. It's, it's not quite the case, not far, but not quite the case. And for a much like probably a more complicated task we're working on uh, is to unlatch the remora from the shark, essentially, and making it um, like standalone so you can run it after base calling as many times as you want with as many models as you want. In terms of the model themselves, we're working on expanding our validation set so we can prove that remora works in many different contexts. And uh, we released the two models. I just mentioned that before, so the 5MC CPG for Kit14. 
We're going to release other models for the different speeds of the models as they will be, uh, they will be available for the, for the community. And more modifications. We're going to start churning modifications out as soon as we've ironed out our pipeline. And res uh, circle back to modifications because the tools are going to be extremely similar. Uh, finally, shout out to the community for the wonderful work that has been done on data visualization. Like, we are really happy to see that people really like uh, the ModBAM format. I mean, we haven't really, we're not responsible for the ModBAM format, but we've pushed quite hard for it. And you can get all this wonderful visualization now uh, from uh, community tools, particularly like Methyl Artist and uh, uh, ModBAM tools. I recommend, uh, I really recommend to give them a try. Um, that's it, I guess. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank uh, all the people that participated in this study. It's not just Marcus and me, it's like quite a few more people in the company, in particular Sarah, Nathan, uh, Matej, and Rashid. Thank you very much. <laughs>